What's the loneliest sound you can think of? For me, it's... There's something about a train horn in the distance, especially when heard at night, that makes me feel alone. Regardless of whether or not I'm around other people, the way it cuts through the quiet darkness and echoes through the night from miles and miles away, hanging in the air like a whisper on the wind, resonates with something deep inside of me that I don't fully understand. Every time I hear one, which is a lot as I live right next to a railroad, I feel a pang of emptiness. And it's been that way for decades. Sounds have so much power to elicit strong and specific emotions from us. Our brains are hardwired to recall experiences and feelings that we associate with the things we hear. No reaction to a sound is universal, but there are definitely common responses many of us have. And when looking at games and really any type of media, that is one of the biggest challenges sound designers and composers face, finding a way to evoke a certain feeling through sound. They have to find answers for what various emotions sound like which is fascinating to me. And of course, the one I find myself thinking about the most is what does loneliness sound like? The answer I imagine a lot of folks would jump to is that it sounds like silence, but I think that misses the mark. True and complete silence can be unsettling, but it isn't something most of us actually experience all that often. So people's association between silence and loneliness probably isn't that strong. The feeling of loneliness seems to come more from sounds that break silence, ones that remind us of the space we're in. One of the most common sounds that do this in games is wind, whether it be whipping around the player or or brushing up against a building they're in. While wind exists almost everywhere, it is strongest in high up and remote locations, creating an association with secluded places. Wind cuts through silence and shifts in intensity in an unpredictable fashion. Personally, hearing it reminds me of late nights where I couldn't fall asleep, and the only thing I could focus on was the wind trying its best to get inside. Honestly though, tons of sounds when isolated can be used to evoke that sense of loneliness whether it be rain, the ticking of a clock, the static of an old radio, or even... In most public situations, we are so bombarded with noise that it can be hard for any one thing to really stand out. So in place somewhere quiet where there are only a few sounds loud enough to hear, those noises become more memorable. Oftentimes though, the loneliest sounds are the ones made by the player character the most common of which being footsteps. Whether it be exploring an old house or moving through deep caverns below the ground, footsteps when paired with relative silence create a sense of isolation. To sell it further, designers typically make footsteps and any noise really far louder than they'd actually be in real life in order to make them stand out even more. When the primary sound a player hears is one they're making, the message being communicated is that they're alone for now at least. Footsteps in this context also usually have a decent bit of reverb on them in order to match the natural sound of a space. Reverb and echoes both give a lonely quality to sounds. They occur most in big empty rooms and long hallways, so when we hear sounds that have them, we are reminded of being alone in those places. The way sound travels and bounces off things defines the feeling of a space. This technique is used to great effect in Disco Elysium. When the player steps out into Revachal proper, the the first thing they hear is a sad and slow horn playing in the distance, echoing across the city. It reverberates off the near empty streets and run down buildings. Revachal not only looks like a city on its last limb, but it also sounds like one. Through simply adding a bit of reverb to the horn, it gives far more depth to it. It becomes part of the scenery, sticking in the air, making the city feel desolate and lonely. So in general, it isn't just sounds that can create a sense of loneliness, but also how those sounds are heard. For instance, proximity to a sound can also greatly augment the feeling it evokes. Continuing with Disco Elysium, when the player enters the whirling in rags, the bar's theme plays diegetically from the speakers. If the player goes upstairs, the song continues, but now at a distance and with the floor blocking part of it, making the song more muted. Hearing music, conversation, and really any sounds of socializing through a wall can feel surprisingly lonesome, especially when hearing a social situation that you're not a part of, because there is a sense of missing out, of other people having fun and feeling connected to each other, and you just being on the other side of it, alone. It's a loneliness fueled by a sort of envy, 
And while it seems like knowing other people are close by should bring some comfort, it often does the opposite. The same technique is used to a slightly different effect in Hades when entering Eurydice's chamber. Upon arriving, the player can hear her singing off screen, seemingly on the other side of a wall somewhere. As you approach, her voice gets fuller, and you can even move past the wall as to not have any separation. But even then, there is still a lonely feel to it as her voice reverberates around her big, empty chamber in hell. The difference here is instead of the loneliness being directed at the player character and in turn the player, it feels attached to Eurydice. She's trying to come to terms with death, and as the game continues, we also learn that she has been separated from Greek mythology's most famous sad boy, Orpheus. While she is a warm person who is capable of living in solitude, she's been cut off from everything she once knew, and that loneliness can be heard in her singing. By having the player first hear her from a distance, it sets the tone for her character moving forward. Of course, creating a sense of isolation isn't always just about how something sounds. In fact, one of the most effective ways to make a sound feel lonelier is through juxtaposition. Take a game you've never heard me talk about before, Outer Wilds. When flying through space in the ship, a calm yet driving theme plays in the background that manages to be both reflective and adventurous, which pretty much perfectly encapsulates the tone of the game. However, if for one reason or another the player is separated from their ship while traveling through space, they are met with this. Within the silence of space, the only notable noise is of the player character breathing and the occasional propulsion of their jetpack, both of which not only illustrate how isolated they are, but also that their two most important resources, oxygen and fuel, are being used up. When comparing it to the lively theme that plays while in the ship, it is clear that this is not the way to travel. While there is always a bit of a melancholy feel to adventuring in Outer Wilds, it's moments like this that hammer home the feeling of being alone more more than any other. Another solid example of this can be seen with The Wind Waker. While sailing during the day, the great sea theme plays, which is bubbly, heroic, and makes me want to stand on the bow of a ship and look out at the horizon. However, once night rolls around, there's no music at all. Just the soft sound of waves, the blowing of wind on your sail, and the creak of your boat as you change directions. The shift in tone accomplishes a lot. For instance, it helps keep things fresh, as despite the great sea theme being a certain banger, it would become less effective if heard constantly. The vast contrast between the soundscapes of the two times of day makes each far more distinct. Where the momentum of the daytime section seems to be pushing players to move to their next objective, the quiet of night asks for reflection, to slow things down a bit, to remember why you're doing this. It also reminds players that not every aspect of adventuring is glorious, and that sometimes it can be quite lonely. Each section serves to highlight the other, always nudging players a bit off balance so they don't get too used to either. In general, music is a great tool to use in order to set a tone, especially a lonely one. Admittedly, I know almost nothing about music theory, and in my attempts to research it for this video, I walked away feeling more confused than when I started. So this examination of what makes music feel lonely will be through the very academic lens of vibes. Some of the loneliest tracks I can think of in video games come from titles focused on exploring worlds that have largely been abandoned, and many of these soundtracks reflect that sense of barrenness by being stripped back in terms of instrumentation. For example, Breath of the Wild relies heavily on the use of piano, sometimes accompanied by a flute or a few violins. As you walk around various areas, fragments of melodies play, causing the vast, broken world to sound broken too. While almost any instrument can sound lonely, I'd argue that the piano is one of the loneliest. Not only can its easy to reach high register create a haunting feel, functionally it is one of the few instruments where a single person can play both a song's harmony and melody, making it an instrument for people who play music by themselves. And I think that gives the soundtrack a lot of power. My favorite piece in the game comes when riding a horse across Hyrule at night. A piano plays what feels like a haphazard assortment of as many notes as possible. As it goes on, it feels just on the edge of formless. The music almost seems unsure of itself. 
It's wandering in the same way Link is, and manages to be both peaceful and unsettling. Then, the violins come in to play a small portion of the original Zelda theme. And excuse me for being a bit saccharine, but hearing it in-game for the first time felt like finding an old friend in the middle of nowhere. Almost as soon as the violins come in, they go away, leaving the player once again alone with just the piano. The use of the original Zelda theme in this track gives a reminder to fans of the series of all the adventures they've gone on before. Hearing it provides a sort of warmth, so when the musical phrase ends so suddenly, it leaves the track feeling even lonelier than before. Another title that is a masterclass in establishing a sense of loneliness to its exploration through music is Hollow Knight. The first few songs the player will hear actually have similar instrumentation to Breath of the Wild, using primarily a piano and viola. However, where the tone in Breath of the Wild is more exploratory, here it is somber. As the player reaches the town of Dirtmouth, which is nearly abandoned, the music highlights the current state of the once great kingdom. It almost seems like a funeral dirge, making the lonely vibes feel driven by loss more than anything else, setting the expectation that the world about to be explored is fractured. Entering Hellenes, though, shakes things up a bit. The tracks start to feel a little brighter, and more instruments join the mix. For instance, Green Path's track feels full of life, albeit of an untamed sort, which matches its general environment. Most of the areas higher up follow a similar trend of having songs with a fair bit of liveliness to them, but as the player goes lower and lower, that liveliness is quickly stripped away. Heading from the City of Tears to the Royal Waterway brings about a massive shift in instrumentation, moving from multiple strings, a harp, and a vocalist to one lone cello. In Deep Nest, a few strings find themselves in the mix, but any sense of melody is lost, and they largely are there to play high, piercing notes to accompany the burrowing of mindless bugs. And once the player gets all the way down to the abyss, they're met with It's hard to call this an actual song, although it does have the occasional string chime in. There are hints of familiarity in the instrumentation, but they've been broken down in an almost unrecognizable way. It illustrates how far the player is from what they've gotten used to, how removed they are from any true sense of life, how they are hopelessly alone. While all of the things I've mentioned so far are ways to bring a sense of isolation to a soundscape, the most important aspect to making any noise feel lonely comes from the associations each of us have with specific sounds. Our own experiences color what sounds lonesome to us, and it's largely based on things we heard when feeling alone. As a kid, I went to camp every summer, and during the day it was the greatest time imaginable. We'd play on the lake, go rock climbing, run through through cornfields, all while forming friendships that would almost certainly end when we went home for the summer, but for those few weeks we were close as blood. Every night though, the excitement of the day would wash away, and I'd lie in bed listening to the snores of my cabin mates unable to fall asleep, and I'd just think. I'd think about home, I'd think about family, I'd think about my friends. I'd think about how I wasn't used to being away from any of them. I'd think about how if I could just fall asleep, I'd wake up and it'd be daytime again, and I could go back to all the good stuff that the days had to offer and leave this feeling behind. And then every night, I'd hear. It feels silly that an experience so seemingly inconsequential has stuck with me for this long. However, no one really has control over what sounds will have a profound impact on them. So while loneliness can sound like a lot of things, for me, it will always be the sound of a train in the distance. The thing is though, I kind of cherish it. Obviously, I don't like feeling lonely all the time, but it is when I do a lot of my best reflection. It gives me space to clear my mind and focus on where I'm at. And yeah, it can be deeply uncomfortable at times, but without it, the rest of my life wouldn't feel as sweet. The next morning at camp wouldn't be as glorious. So I kind of welcome loneliness. Solitude is a common theme in games. And throughout the process of making this video, I realized that most of my favorite titles ever are ones that cultivate a sense of isolation and loneliness through game design, story, visuals, and of course, sound. And 
It makes sense. It's a way to step into that lonesome mindset without being stuck in it myself. Playing lonely games validates my personal experiences. It's proof that I'm not the only person who feels alone at times. Which should be an obvious fact, but it's one that's easy to lose track of. And that's why I love games that are able to craft such lonely feeling experiences. They make me feel less alone. If you're interested in hearing more about how people react to sounds and more specifically music, I'd recommend checking out the show Secrets of the Brain, which has an episode that takes a scientific look at how music affects memory and emotions. And the best way to watch it is through this video sponsor, CuriosityStream. CuriosityStream is a video service that has a library filled with thousands of documentaries on pretty much every topic you can think of. And so much on there is fascinating. Whether it be the episode of Secrets of the Brain that I've mentioned or some other documentary, there is something on there for everyone. Right now, you can get a full year of the service for under $15. And what's even better is that with that, you also get access to Nebula for as long as you're signed up with CuriosityStream. For those who don't know, Nebula is a creator-owned service filled with some of the best channels on YouTube and they also let me be a part of it. It gives us a place to post our work without having to worry about demonetization or the algorithm, which in turn gives us the chance to experiment with ideas that don't always do so well on YouTube. So if you're on Nebula, you'll get some bonus content while supporting creators, and it's all ad-free. There are extended cuts of videos, Nebula exclusives, and a whole bunch of shows that are worth checking out. So yeah, for under $15 a year, you get all the great stuff on CuriosityStream, as well as tons of extra content from awesome creators over on Nebula. It's just a really great deal and also helps support this channel a fair bit. So check it out. Anyway, thanks to CuriosityStream for sponsoring this video. For all of you still watching, thank you so much. This channel is partly made possible because of my patrons, so thank you so much to all of them and a special shout out to Elfenrez and William Glenn H for being honorary bag mutants. I appreciate you. With that, I hope you all have a great day and or night and I'll see you in the next one.